Acurex Pharmaceuticals is a late stage biopharmaceutical company developing a new class of small molecule antibiotics for difficult to treat bacterial infections. It's recently released clinical data for its leading antibiotic candidate used to treat C. diff. And with me is CEO David Lucci to update us on these clinical trials. They've been kind of coming fast and furious lately. So this was positive microbiology and microbiome data from the phase 2B clinical trial. So expl yes. explain, summarize what happened. Indeed, Jan, thanks for having us. Uh, I think it was our strongest press release yet. We had certainly a number of compliments from our institutional investor base. Um, so what happened in a nutshell, uh, in terms of the microbiology, which is what the R&D guys focus on from Big Pharma, we're showing that 94% of our patients treated with our ibezapulstat, our investigative antibiotic to treat C. diff patients, 94% of them by the end of day three of a 10 day treatment regimen had no C. difficile left. Um, so their infections were gone. And yet with oral vancomycin, which is broad spectrum antibiotic as opposed to us, we're, we're a narrow spectrum. Oral vancomycin after day three of a 10 day treatment regimen um, only cleared 71% of the patients with C. difficile. So that shows the power of our program compared to a standard of care in a billion dollar industry. Mm. On the microbiome, what we showed is a log, we have consistent preservation and restoration of the healthy microbiome, the good bacteria in our gut. So patients with C. diff had a logarithmic increase um, in the healthy bacteria to back to normal um, during the 10 day treatment. Whereas patients on oral vancomycin, some of them had a logarithmic benefit, but most of them had a logarithmic uh, deterioration in the healthy bacteria in the gut, most of them. Um, and that's because it's a broad spectrum antibiotic. And we have what we call, the science guys call it a, logarith um, a violin chart in our poster presentation that's on our website that we presented last week at a scientific conference, a microbiome conference in Texas. Mm. So that shows exactly what I'm talking about. It's just another couple of pieces to the puzzle that show how we're separating in a positive way our ibezapulstat compared to the standard of care to treat patients with C. diff. Yeah, and I want to talk about the significance of this because C. diff is an infection that um, often shows up in hospitals, nursing homes. It's been a problem. There's been no new treatment for decades. So this is really um, something significant. Yes, it, it is significant. Uh, Pfizer and Sanofi both failed. Um, with vaccines for C. diff, Summit Therapeutics failed at phase three. There have been a number of failures in C. diff. We're next up with the regulators. And when I say with the regulators, uh, we have news coming regarding our FDA submission to frame out our phase three uh, clinical trial mandate. But then beyond that, it's the European regulators, the UK, Japan, Canada. We're gonna leverage everything that we've done successfully in the clinical trial program and manufacturing to date uh, to get on track for approvals around the world. Yeah, um, and you know, it's kind of interesting to watch your stock price as these press releases come out on the data because it, it goes up, has great, and then there, this great press release comes out and then it, uh, is there kind of a, a buy the rumor, sell the fact thing going on? What do you, do you even watch yeah. the stock price or are you just focused on the business? Yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> any, any CEO that says they don't watch their stock price, <laughs> You know, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that. We watch, of course, the last two times uh, we've had great press. The same thing has happened that you're describing. You know, it's kind of unusual for us to see, uh, but every time Ibezapulstat takes us right out from underneath uh, the downward pressure with more and more good news. Mm. And we think that's gonna continue for the next six to 12 months. Yeah, now you mentioned some upcoming uh, value inflection points. So tell me what those would be. What should we be looking out for? So um, small numbers, but we have uh, what we call extended clinical cure data coming out uh, very soon. That data for the first time that we know of, it, an antibiotic was tested 94 days out. Normally they only go out 60 days. We haven't seen another antibiotic in C. diff that's been tested that far out. So if we can show small numbers, not stat sig, but if we can show that our patients have not only sustained cures 100% of the time, um, but also extended clinical cures another 64 days beyond that, you're looking at a $4.7 billion US market for recurrent C. diff. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes the cost of hospitalizations and other antibiotics. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can kind of 
virtually eliminate uh, recurrent C. diff with your antibiotic therapy, albeit in mild to moderate cases, you could do some serious damage at reducing the uh, cost burden to the public health system. Yeah, for, no, for that's CDI. a really interesting point that I don't think we've talked about before. The, somebody doesn't have to spend an extra however many days in a hospital. That's so right. That makes the whole just thing operate more efficiently. Well, even now, um, if I had C. diff and a doctor were to tell me, you could take I I Acurex's Ibezapolstat and have a 94% chance to fully eradicate your C. diff bacteria uh, by day three of treatment, or you could take this other one, which is 71% chance. You know, w which would you rather take? And ours can be cheaper. Our price point can be better. Yeah. Um, and side effects would, you know. No side effects. Not an issue no. with that either. Now, um, so I guess phase uh, three is coming up. So um, when will that happen? Does the company have the cash to go through that? Um, well, well, we'll know exactly if we have enough cash uh, after we meet the FDA. We're getting bids now from local CROs for international clinical trial work. We either have enough cash right now with our ATM in place and the cash on hand, or we might have to inch up just a wee little bit, depending on how things go with the FDA, but it won't be anything dramatic, mm -hmm. nothing close to the money that we raised on the ATM. Mm -hmm. It might just be a little nip and tuck here or there. Um, in terms of M&A or partnering with a bigger pharmaceutical company, would that be something that you would consider? Absolutely, that was uh, the game plan from the start of the company. Uh, based on a prior experience with Big Pharma, they wanted to see uh, proof of uh, principle in man, phase two data. We've now delivered that, and we're gonna continue to deliver smaller pieces with these extra endpoints that we're gonna uh, press release. Um, so that's plan A. Plan B, on a parallel track, will be to continue to pursue phase three. Now some might ask, well, wh why do you have to do it on a parallel track? Why would you not want to save the money for phase three and embark upon that program if the M&A isn't successful, if you don't find a partner that the board thinks reflects the intrinsic value of the drug. And the reason is because we don't want to be caught flat-footed having to wait another year if we don't find a partner and put us back a year on the timeline. I see. Uh, there's more money on the back end in terms of revenue streams if we continue things going you know, with kind of like a better cadence. Mm -hmm. Anything else investors should know? The best is yet to come. Uh, things are looking really good. We, we are chuck full with press for the next 12 months throughout 24. And at one point in 2024, uh, we hope to be able to put a decision to our board to say, we either have a transaction with X company, here's the letter of intent, and here's the uh, status of our phase three preparedness. Mm -hmm. So our board will be able to pick out of basket A or basket B, and then management's done its job and done the best uh, for the interests of the shareholders. Yeah, okay. Well, I look forward to our next conversation and update. Thanks, David. Thank you, Jay. Thanks. Uh -huh. Cheers.